Okay, we're going to start over here. I made one video, but it turned out like shit. I'm going to try to keep this video a little shorter. I did do this side on the first video. And you can see how nice and tight that is. We'll do a little uh, bounce test here. You can see that that's pretty tight. That's kind of what you're after. So what I'm going to do here first is I'm going to take my SIG Supercoat Butyrate Dope. And I'm going to go around this entire outline, top and bottom, and give this the center section about a good couple inches. And I'll run this side about an inch over here, half inch. I'm going to give this trailing edge a real good coat, give all these edges on the, on the wing tips a good coat, and give this top and bottom. And what you want to do is let that dry, and then we'll come back and uh, start putting silk on. Well, the reason you're doing this, you're not going to cover the ribs or all this. You're just going to do the leading edges of everything and the trailing edges. And I usually do about a half inch up on the trailing edge. But I do cut it off on the trailing edge back here to where you're not going to see it and there's not a place to where uh, wind can grab a hold of it. You also do the bottom first. That way there when you do the top and you lay your silk on, you can wrap it around the leading edge so there's no place for wind or anything to start pulling it off on you. Not that it would, but it could. So I'll go ahead and do all these edges, and then we'll come back and uh, I'll start putting the silk on. Okay, I went ahead and went around all the edges, as I was saying in my first video. Didn't really do too much here because, well, that's got uh, three, this side's got three coats, this side's got four coats of dope, so it'll stick good there. Make sure you get a good coat on these edges. There you can't even see it. And along these edges, uh, make sure you have a trailing edge and a leading edge. I cut a piece of silk roughly to size. Usually I hang this from a piece of wood um, and get it wet, but just for this purposes, and, I don't know, it's a little different now, but I'm just going to lay this over this. You do want to kind of watch the grain in the silk. And I'm going to do about half of the servo box. I'm going to make sure you got enough there. Yeah, about an inch. I got a little more than that. Uh, actually, you know, that's a pretty good amount. Um, I'm trying not to waste any. Now you can see how wrinkly that is. Um, what I do is I, I got a well at my house, so I don't use my tap water because it's got a lot of minerals in it. And it can, well, that can show up on your silk. Um, some city waters, they add a lot of crap to it, so I suggest buying bottled water. And this is a little mister I stole from my wife. She uses it, well, she used to use it on her tanning bed. But we'll go ahead and, you want to get it damp. Not soaking wet, the balsa wood, I mean, that's why I usually do this on a piece of wood, because, well, balsa wood is kind of like a sponge. So you don't want to get it wet enough to where it, uh, Start soaking up the wood and to deform stuff. Mist it down real good. And you can already see the wrinkles are coming out. Of course, now I don't know where my paintbrush went. Where the hell did my paintbrush go? Always have your tools ready. <laughs> I just cleaned that thing, it's got to be here. What the hell? Where did I put that? Oh, there it is. And for this, I like to use a, you know, eh, half inch, whatever. But kind of let it sit for a minute. And you can kind of grab a hold of it and pull it tight this way. And then go ahead and give that a coat. And this stuff does dry pretty quick. But the nice thing is, oops, you can uh, throw down some more. And we'll kind of loosen it up for if you got to work with it. You can. You want to make sure that's tight. Let's go along the leading edge. Should have turned that up a little nicer. This all down to where it's being held. Should hit 
pull it tight. And once this packs up a little bit, that's going to come a little more right here. So, oh, where's my Stanley knife? And then you can kind of go around the nice new Stanley blade. Try not to cut through the piece below it or, uh, or scar up the uh, balsa wood. Take that off. Yeah. You can cut that out before you do all this. Okay. I'm going to go a little bit this way. Get that out of there. Go a little bit this way. Now the silk does dry fast. Extremely fast. <laughs> um, you can hear my heater probably running. I have a little shop off my house. Let's put a little more in this guy. I'll just make sure it's good stuff. And give it a little misting. Water has a little bit of moisture you put on here. Nothing to do with the dough holding the silk down. And then kind of start getting the wrinkles out of it. And you can see the water pretty much took all them big wrinkles out. And now what I usually do, after I get it kind of like that, is I'll go along this trailing edge here. Like so. Let's get a nice coat on it where it's being held down. This is not as quick or as easy as uh, plastic coverings, but this, once you get it on and you get it on tight, you'll never have to tighten it again. The stuff actually gets tighter as time goes by. If you take it to the airfield, leave it out in the sun, it'll be tighter when you leave than when you got there. But you can see, and sometimes what I'll do is I'll take my finger and just rub it across it, because that'll take off the excess, and then it dries even quicker. Now you can see that's drying really quick. Now we're going to pull this this way. Get all the, that's pretty dry. Get all that. And what I'm going to do this time, I'm going to move this over here so it ain't dripping over there. And this is the bottom of the wing, so it's not going to curve around the leading edge. I'm going to cut that right along the spar. And I want to wrap the top around so the seam is facing the correct direction. And as you go, just pull it a little bit. Getting the silk wet will actually make it stretch a little easier. But when it dries, it'll shrink back up. You want to... You can already kind of... I think you can kind of see. But that's getting pretty... And there's no wrinkles in it anymore. The tighter you can get it now, the better off it's going to be in the long run. Keep it damp. See the wrinkles all coming out? You don't have to get it, you know, trampoline tight right now. You're not trying to do that. You're just trying to get it to where it's like what it looks like right now. I'm going to cut this back here so I can wrap the top. When I do the top, I can wrap that around to where there's no edges into the wind. I don't want any seams on the top either. I will cut this and cut that off in the middle of the trailing edge. This here is kind of a, it's kind of a, you got these sharp little corners here and stuff. Um, that can be kind of a, I'm gonna move this, kind of a pain in the ass, especially that corner. Um, 
what I usually do is I'll, I'll get some dope on here. Yeah, let me just pull on it. You can see it kind of stays. The trick is keep it wet, damp, not wet, damp. Get some here. You can see that's already getting pretty dry down here. Okay. Now with that. Shit, I think I brought my scissors in the damn house. I did. Did I? I think I did. Now I usually take a pair of scissors and notch that. But I'm pretty sure I did bring them in the house. So we're going to try to do it with a Stanley knife. Right in this corner. Scissors work much better. I like that. And I can pull that down. I can pull it. Where's my water bottle? I can pull this down. Put a little dope on that. When you cut the silk, it's kind of like know, laying a vinyl floor. Let's use that for an example. There's no redo, so you always want to cut where you got, you know, extra. This here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to dope all the way around this. Just like that, get plenty on there. Then we're going to spray the water. Then I'm just going to... And I always kind of keep looking over everything. You can see there's a wrinkle there. I don't know if you can see that, but see how I just pull that out? You just want to make sure you get all that shit out. And then take your finger and just rub over it. A little wrinkle right there in that corner. Just take your finger, rub over it. See how that kind of bends around that corner right there if you do that? Just like Monaco. So will do the same thing. Only difference is, until this is dry, the dope I'm talking about. Um, you really got to keep the silk damp at all times. And if you miss a spot, like on this edge, it actually turns white. Now you see how that loosened back up? Look for the dope. It wasn't quite dry enough. Just pull it tight, rub it with your finger, and keep it damp. I got a big wrinkle down here, right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull that this way. I'm going to pull it this way. And then I'm going to give this edge here a little cold dope. Pull it nice and tight. You can kind of see that corner is kind of... Another thing I like to do is I take my palm of my hand and it'll round that off really nice. I don't know if you can see that. But you see that? It actually wrapped the silk around. And you can do that on every corner. Down. You want to kind of get this around the edges, otherwise, like I said, when it dries, it will tighten up. I'm just going to put that like that for now. And then, we got that all pretty good. I mean, you can see that. Oh, there's one little wrinkle right there. Let me pull that out. I'll just kind of round that off. I don't know if you can see that now. You can see that's pretty good. Well, then I'm just going to move my box back a little bit. And I'm going to take my handy dandy little brush here. And I'm going to grab the back seam of this. I'm going to load that up with those. Right there too. This is kind of tricky because if you don't pull it tight and keep it tight as you go along, it'll bubble up. So I, I always rub my finger along this because I know that can happen. Just go along, keep pulling it nice and tight. I should have actually sprayed this one, or got it damp before I did this, because the top, this is drying. It never stops drying. It's very important to keep it damp. Once the silk starts drying, it's shrinking. The dope will do some shrinking, but the majority 
but you want to get is just from the silk itself. Then run your finger along that, take off all the extra dope. Just pull it nice and tight. And see the bubbles down there? I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but I'll just pull them out. Now, now what I'll do is I'll cut right about there. Then I'll overlap the other piece to right about here. That way there I don't have anything in the wind. Or that you can see. Okay, that is pretty tacked up. I can see there is a it, if you don't get enough water on it, it'll actually look white. And you can see that. And that's because it didn't stick to the wood. There. You can pull that back around, bring it up here. And you can see that corner stayed tight. Well, not as tight as I want it. Let's see where it let go a little bit there. So put some more dope on that. Get it wet. Keep it damp. This is probably the last time I'll get it down. The gold will be dry enough to hold it in place after this. Now what I'll do is I'll trim this all off. Trim this off about here, about in the middle of the leading edge, so I can wrap the top piece of silk around and overlap that. Like I said, I cut this down down here, and then uh, on the next video, we'll give the entire section. Uh, actually, I'm going to cover the top, which is pretty much the same process as this. Actually, I'll tape that as well. But uh, after I get this all done and trimmed, I'll cover the top, and then I'll start getting the coats of dope. So, next video, uh, I should be doing that yet today. Okay, now, after not being able to find my scissors, and uh, I think I brought that up in the previous video, I went in the house, looked around, and about 20 minutes later, I realized they were in my back pocket. This is probably the most important tool you're going to have. These were haircutting scissors. They're getting a little dirty. I need to clean them. But I got both sides of the wing covered now. This is the old side that's already done. This is the side that's not. But you can see, you know, it's all coated all but the main area, which we're going to do the back side and the top side right now. But I trim about, also oh, there's an eighth inch along this edge. And this here, I just ripped it down and on. Back here on the trailing edge, you can see right down the middle, well, more on this side. I tried to leave as much on there as I could to get the best adhesion. And right down that. Now, when I dope the, the whole wing, I like to use, this brush kind of sucks, but a nice little brush. The first coat you put on is going to really eat the dope up. What I normally do is I finish this area here. I may change brushes because I ain't liking this one. I've been using it for quite a, quite a few years and it just really it sucks. I got a new one up here somewhere. Where is it? Get that all the way out. She's got beauty. Just, and when you're doing this, you can tell when the, you got enough on there because the wood will actually come through like if you're staining it. Um, brush strokes do matter. Not so much on this first coat because, like I said, the, the silk is going to soak uh, or eat, eat this up. It's kind of like uh, if you've ever done drywalling. I try to get that back edge at the same time. You know, when you paint it the first time, it it takes a lot of paint. I usually go about halfway down the wing. And you can really, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but like I said, brush strokes right now ain't going to show up really because it's really, this stuff's going to dry and there's going to be no marks really, unless you leave a big drop or something. And then you want to hit this and you want to hit this quick. Just want to get it dark. You kind of got to watch down along here and up here because it will pool. And all the rest of your coats it will not, but the first one it will. So you just want to get it to where you know you got it. You don't have to be really careful. The silk is tight now, 
it's actually going to get loose again. And I'll show you when we're done with this. And this is where it starts, you know, the silk is going to stick to the ribs and all that. You are doping it. But you've never put any dope on the ribs. So as it dries, it can move. I mean, it'll break free. I'm going to go ahead and give this all a nice little coat. I don't know if you see that. A little drop there and there. Try not to do that. This is what's really going to... That'll make it look nice. Make sure you get that leading edge. Go ahead and slap that on there. And you can tell when it's... I mean, if you don't get every little bit, that's fine. I mean, you're going to get a couple more coats anyway. You just want to... What you're basically trying to do right now is there's a bazillion little holes in this silk. And you have to fill every single one of them. If you don't, when you paint it, it will show up. And it would bleed. It's really... I don't know if I got a wing in here where that's happening to me or not. I'm sure I do. I just don't know which one. But you, know, you can see that bubble. That's on the inside. It's not going to hurt anything. Now, there's going to come a time when you're doing this, and you're going to think, God, I really messed that up. i got to tear it all off and start over. We will cover that when we come to it. And like I said, you'd be really surprised how much this stuff will shrink up. Just from, the, just from you getting it wet when you put it on, and right now. But there's that. And then I'm going to go ahead and do this side, but I'm not going to film it because I'm trying to keep this video short. And as I go, I'll keep explaining things. Um, until the next time. Okay, I put one coat of dope on the wing. This side was previously, previously finished. Um, and I don't know if you can see that, but see how wrinkly it is? That's actually one coat of dope on it. Looks like, oh, you messed up. You have to tear it all off and start over. That is normal. A bigger wing will do it worse. Uh, different uh, silk thicknesses, if you get a light, medium, or heavy, um, they all react a little differently, but they will all do this. Usually the second coat, it looks worse than this. But by the time you get to the third coat and you let this dry for a good 24 hours, it'll, it'll look like this. And then this will actually keep getting tighter and tighter. So when you put your first coat of dope on it, it looks like that, which is completely normal. And you can see the edge there. And now I'm going to give it another coat. And then uh, you'll see what I'm talking about. So when you put your first coat on, some, depending on the wing and the, and the ply of your uh, silk, um, this, this will vary. But I've, I've had it do it a lot worse in a bigger way. And a smaller way. I mean, just a, I didn't miss, but it will do that. But like I said, the second coat will start tightening it up. Third coat will make it like a drum. Fourth coat is basically just to make sure you filled all the microscopic little holes so when you paint it, it doesn't look like you took a, oh, a pen or a horse tranquilizer needle and uh, poked it all over the place, you know, because <laughs> that's what it looks like. So the fourth coat is pretty much just to make sure all them little fine holes are filled. But I'll go ahead and give this another coat and then we'll show you what it looks like after that. But you can, you can see that pretty good. So like I was saying, silicon is... A little harder, a little more expensive than, than, uh, than let's say, monocoat. Um, I'm going to grab a wing up here. Well, let's see here. Here's one. This old one here. I have not flown this. It's been sitting up on my shelf for well, a few years. It's an old-timer wing. You can kind of see that. Pretty dirty. I have to wash it. But that is, this is the real light uh, silk. But you can see there's not a wrinkle in it. Not a wrinkle. Not one. And that's the way that'll, I'll never have to tighten that up or mess with it. It just keeps getting tighter. I mean, that's, can, I don't know if you can hear that, but that's pretty tight. I'll show you one other one. Let's see here. Here we go. Oops. <laughs> All right, there we go. I got racks with nothing but wings and airplanes on it. This is, I built this a couple years ago, I've never flown, it's a Sig Hummer, it's got a GT07 on it. But you can see that monocoat, I mean it's just as tight as the day I put it on there. 
a little dusty, but ready to fly. Here's a wing. I don't know. I think I did fly this last year. But you can kind of see the monocle how loose and there it is. And you look over here, you can see that. You have to tighten that up. And, you know, pretty much everywhere. It's just, I mean, if you look at the center, that's what monocle does. And that's one of the reasons I don't like it. I do have one other wing here somewhere. Where did I put that? It's a good size wing. It's a red wing. I don't know if that would put it. Probably over here. Oh, there it is. It's a blue wing. But this here. Oh, come here. Oh, shit. A ladder. Here's another. I don't think I've ever flown this either, but I probably built this three or four years ago. And again, still. Here it's just drum tight. I mean, and that's what you'll get with silk. It just sits and does nothing but get tighter and tighter. So that's one of the reasons I like it. Plus, it's not like a cookie cutter. So when I put the second coat out here, I'll make another video and show you, you know, this here tightening up. <coughs> and uh, we'll go from there. Actually, I decided to. Uh, kind of covered doing the second coat of dope because it is kind of important. Um, I've already done right here but what I'm doing now is I'm coming all the way out and now the brush stroke strokes do matter. Uh, the first coat you can get away with but at this point you really want to try to make sure and the, the silk has you know got enough uh, dope in it from the first coat to where it's not flopping around you can probably see the wrinkles in this but what i like to do is go about halfway again like i did the first time because i don't like the stuff to dry before i get you know and then brush strokes will show up but you can see now i can go quite a bit further per brush load but now you do want to pay attention to your brush strokes though Watch for any kind of pulling up. I mean, uh, I mean, you can see brush strokes in it, but if you uh, start going all over the place, they will really show up when you paint it. So kind of keep that in mind. I always get some on the trailing edge and leading edge just to make sure I'm getting a good coat on everything. There's always that got a hair or something in there. Looks like I missed a few spots. I don't think I did, but I'm just gonna hit them again quick. And it's been my experience that on your second coat. On some airframes, not all of them, the dope or the silk will actually get looser than it did on the first coat. Other times it'll dry nice and fairly tight. So you want to make sure you get a good coat on there. But I won't, uh, I'm going to give the, the top side a coat too right now. And like I said, what I do a lot of the times, this side of the wing is going to be, usually I do the whole wing at once, um, both sides. I don't like to do like the bottom and then the top. Um, I do both sides that way there as the silk does dry and tighten it doesn't distort or warp the wing So doing half and half is a good idea because you can keep up with it a little easier But usually like I said I do the whole wing I'll uh, Put the silk the entire wing and I'll give the entire bottom a coat and by the time I get from here to here I can pretty much flip it over and rest it on something like this um, I do got a little thing over here Jesus I do got a little thing over here that I use for a weight because this side of the wing because it is finished is going to be heavier. So what I'll do is I'll just hold this here and set this out here so it's not resting on the wet dope underneath there. 
But I'll go ahead and give this a coat, one more coat while I got my brush dirty, and then we'll be back. All right. Well, this is three coats. You can see all the wrinkles are gone. No wrinkles anywhere. Nice and smooth. Like I said in an earlier video, this is a sign I did originally with a video, making a video of, but it was, I got four fluorescent bulbs above my workbench, and with the way the camera was set, it was just blinding. So, but, I mean, you know, I'm going to kind of aim, aim this, but you can see that thing is like a trampoline. And that's just going to get tighter and tighter as time goes on. This is three coats, bottom's three coats. I am going to give the top a fourth coat. Um, if you look at it, this will not show up on camera, but you'll see little like shiny speckles here and there. And there are places that uh, usually will show up when you paint it. So I'm going to give the top one more coat just to be on the safe side. A couple other things is um, I use uh, luster coat. You know, I've got 30 cans of it. And at 8, 10, 12 bucks a can, whatever you have to get it for, it's kind of expensive. I use Luster Coat in all their dark colors, um, like the, but the yellows, whites, silvers. I'll use Rust-Oleum. Rust-Oleum, uh, a lot of people don't know this. If you run an electric, it doesn't matter. But Rust-Oleum is uh, hot fuel proof. It, it, actually, it's cold. I mean, nitro won't really do too much to it. Um, I've used Rust-Oleum a lot in the past. Um, but on this here, I'll give this one more coat. It's ready to be painted. Um, and when I paint it, uh, I real you're not trying to cover it in the first coat. Real thin coats. Just enough to where it'll bleed and bond together. And then, you know, usually I'll give it two to three coats, depending on what color I'm painting it. And then I'll do the scratch or whatever I'm going to do. Um, and I'm going to make a video you guys like this and, and, the, and the rudder and all that. I will not monocoat these. I'm going to take this stuff here Where is it? and I'm going to give it you know it's a sanding sealer um, I'm going to give it two coats give it a light sanding give it a third coat or a fourth coat give it a real fine sanding to really smooth it out and then I'll paint it um, there will be absolutely no monocoat on this plane when I'm done or any kind of plastic uh, covering um, and then just paint that as well. Um, and again, just to recap a little bit here. Um, even the fuselage, um, that will be, you know, sandy sealed. And I see I got some splits in the wood here. That's great. Anyway, I have to fix that later. But yeah, this will be sandy sealed and, you know, painted. Perimeter edge, when you first start, perimeter edge, quarter inch, three quarters of an inch, top and bottom, leading edge, on the trailing edge, do the back trailing edge, and then about a half inch or so up. Every silk is different. Um, usually you got three grades, fine, medium, and heavy. Um, this, is a, this is a medium here. Um, and they all react differently with the, uh, the, the dough. Um, you do have to, with a, with a monocle or plastic coverings, how you tighten that is with heat. Well, how you tighten this basically is by getting it damp, not soaking wet, but damp when you first put it on and, and you're tacking down the, trail, the edges and keeping it damp because it will dry, it will shrink, and it can pull loose if, this, if, if where you uh, tack it down is not secure. So you want to make sure that the edges are secure and you keep it. I mean, you can, I mean that's just, you want to make sure you keep it damp. Um, usually after I get the whole thing all tacked down, I will mist it maybe one or two more times just to make sure. Um, I'm going to turn my heater off here. Um, it's real important to make sure you get this trailing edge real good. And I, I do end the seams right back here to where you're not going to see them. The front, uh, the leading edge, I do that underneath the bottom. When you start covering, start on the bottom. Um, let's see anything else. And like, like I showed you in the video, you know, that first quarter, second, whatever it was, it does get really wrinkly. And I believe it's the heavier silk. It might be the, I, don't, I can't remember. But one of them, 
actually on the second coat it will get really wrinkly. I mean to where it just looks like shit. Don't panic. Just give it another coat after it dries. And as a rule you want to kind of let this stuff dry 100% before you give it another coat. Um, if you, you, know, you don't want to be in a big hurry. Just you know, let it dry. Um, you can actually probably put four to five coats on this and this will act, actually end up like a mirror surface. But this dope is expensive and pretty much doing this wing. This was a can I had from last year and it, uh, it pretty, it was probably three quarters full and just this wing used that just about, I mean there's probably that much left in it if that. But that's three coats on the bottom and four on the top. So. Um, and again, monocoat's a little more forgiving. All these I don't know if you can see that. All these little areas, you got to make sure you sand them, you know, where the ribs meet the sheathing here and here. No high spots, no nothing. Because you know, the silk will really, really highlight that. It's gotta, everything's got to be smooth, you know, as smooth as you can get it. Um, but that's pretty much how you silk a wing. And actually, uh, well, let me see if I can grab it here. I'll give you a little example here. This here is an airplane. These are both exactly the same airplanes. This one's got a VT-29 on it. And I monocoated this. Because, oh, let me get this one out of the way. I monocoated this. And you can see it, it looks like shit. You know? No doubt about it. Looks like shit. I don't know if you can see all that or not, but you know, that's, that's one of the biggest reasons I don't like monocoat. It's not a bad flying airplane. Let me grab the other one. Now this is an identical airplane. I just oops, did it a little differently. Uh, and I'm, I'll probably uh, silk the fuselage on this stick too. But even this I silk. But you can see, you know, you can see all the woodwork in there. Now it's black. It's hard to see. But there's not, whoop, there's not one wrinkle in that. Not one. It's a little dirty, but that's all silk. Kind of. Yeah, you can see the woodwork in there. But isn't that nice? I mean, I can leave. This is. I am, I, I've never even flown this. And I think I built this four years ago. The VT21. I've flown that a few times. But this one here, I was going to fly this summer. I never got around to it. But you can see that's. Uh, that's pretty nice. This I did not silk. That I sanded, sealed, and painted, but this here was built up. You can see the ribs and stuff in it, so that's all silk. So, you can see the difference. Put this back up here. But like I was saying, just take your time. Like anything in life, um, the more you do it, the better you're going to get at it. It's a, it's a little more expensive. Here's an aileron. This here, I will sand and seal this, and you can see it's nice and straight. That's awesome. But uh, I'll straighten that out with a little water. Um, this here, I'll sand and seal all down and get it as smooth as humanly. You know, I'm not going to go crazy with it, but I'll get it smooth enough to where it'll match this when it's painted. And that's about it. That's how you silk an airplane. Any questions? Leave a leave leave a question or a message or whatever, and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Um, like I said, the silk you can get on eBay usually. I get three square yards for like 19 bucks, which is enough to do this wing three times. Um, or go to a fabric place. Um, you get this stuff here. The best place I found isn't even getting it from SIG. It's getting it from uh, Penn Valley Hobbies out of Pennsylvania. So their prices are reasonable and their shipping is good. Um, this does have to ship as a hazardous material, of course. It, it has to be. You can't go on an airplane, so when you order it, it takes a week to get it. But they're pretty good about shipping. But that's pretty much it. I mean, you can, you can see how tight that is. And like I was saying, you take this to the airfield on a 100 degree day and it sits out in the sun all day, this will be tighter when you bring it home than when you took it to the airfield. Um, it does not come loose once it's tight. It only gets tighter. And I can't stress enough, if do the top and bottom or the whole wing at one time. Actually, this is the first time I've ever done half and half, and I think I like that better because then I got places to hang on to it where I'm not, you know, sticking my fingers in wet dope or whatever. 
but do the top and bottom because when this drives it gets tight like that it you know this is a pretty beefy wing but it can distort the wing and twist it another thing to keep in mind is this stuff stinks <laughs> pretty bad um my my wife can smell me smell it on me when i go in the house so this is not something you want to do in your mom and dad's basement or uh your wife's kitchen um I mean, you can do it outside in the summer if you've got decent weather, or out in the garage kind of thing. But uh, I wouldn't uh, plan on doing that if you have a wife that well, doesn't like stink and uh, your parents get upset easily. But other than that, that's all I can think of. I mean, that's, that's going to look nice when it's all painted up. Uh, I am going to make a video, you know, the sanding sealer on the tail surfaces and stuff like that, just so you can kind of see what it should look like. And this sanding sealer, you almost need a jackhammer to mix it up. It's really thick on the bottom. It's like concrete, but other than that, it's good stuff, and I can't find anything else to use other than that that works as well. So, any questions, leave a comment.